Jeremy Courtney. He's the executive director of an international development organization in Iraq. He moved to Iraq with his young family in 2007 to assist with relief efforts and still uh, lives there today. He is uh, author of Preemptive Love, Pursuing Peace, One Heart at a Time. And just wanted his insights uh, as far as what's going on in Iraq right now. Jeremy, first, just welcome to you. Thank you. Uh, you were Christian, and you wrote this in your opinion piece. Let me just quote you. You said, the world may watch from afar and denounce all Iraqi Muslims as militants bent on conquest. But up close, the reality is very different. But just given the murderous rampage of these ISIS militants, you have to understand where the world is coming from. Yeah. I understand it, but it's also important for someone on the ground, and particularly someone as a Christian, speaking back mostly to a Christian population, to challenge that and trying to provide some nuance to it. That said, tell me about Sheikh Ali. So the Sheikh is a, a friend of mine that I met in a hotel lobby one day about seven years ago, and I was, I was sitting, minding my business, trying to work on some things. and. And when him and a group of robed clerics all decked out uh, approached me, I, I kind of freaked out. I, I saw these guys as the enemy. I saw them as the scary face of Islam that I'd been trained to see them at. I, I began packing my things and tried to kind of get away from them. And this guy saw my fear, I think, and he, he tried to calm me down. And he said, no, no, friend, Habibi, my beloved, sit down. Let me, let me get to know you. Let me talk to you. And this guy just really won me over with his smile. And, and from there brought me into a community of Muslim leaders and a, a community of Muslim people from across Iraq that have really changed my perspective on the ground there. With your perspective, you wrote at the end of your piece, you wrote that terrorists, they, they actually need the violence committed against them to justify their own violence, their own cause. You know, you write, uh, as is the title of this book, that they need preemptive love. But, but just to push you, tell me, tell me how one could, should love someone who abducts little girls, forces families out of villages, threaten a man to, con to convert or, or else be beheaded. How do you show them preemptive love? Well, from a Christian theological perspective, for one, you can start with this, this base level notion that everyone is made in the image of God. And so we spend a lot of time talking about how evil these people are. And that's mm -hmm. absolutely true. But one of the things that we're not discussing is how we actually have some of that stuff in ourselves as well. And how the good stuff that we have in ourselves, they have in them somewhere as well. And so when we talk about acute issues like are happening today, it can seem completely intractable and ridiculous. But when you back up a little bit and you have a larger conversation about our relationship with violence in general, our violent mm -hmm. responses to things, when, when you look at a group of people that could choose to go in and love their enemies through the provision of services and care and, and working through our fears, then we start to see options that emerge that don't seem present to us today when we're talking about Yazidis fleeing from ISIS. But, hmm. but in a larger conversation, there are options. 